And what I realized with the club is what makes them so mad is when you don't want to be a part of their club. And Ice Cube really did leave that club. But why exactly? Rumors swirling around suggest that Diddy and Jay-Z are teaming up on potentially controversial ventures, sparking widespread online chatter. Adding to the speculation, reports claim that Ice Cube has voiced concerns, alleging involvement of Diddy, Jay-Z, and R. Kelly in troubling projects. I'm talking about the club of gatekeepers that we all got to deal with. You know who they are. Claims have emerged suggesting that Hollywood functions like a shadowy entity, with figures like Jay-Z and Diddy purportedly pursuing profits at any cost. Allegations hint at a disturbing scheme where young individuals, particularly female artists, are exploited for financial gain. According to reports, Ice Cube isn't hesitating to speak out against these allegations. I think you feel better about yourself when you say what needs to be said at the time it needs to be said and not afterwards where you go home and think. I should have said. Allegedly, Ice Cube asserts that numerous female artists have faced significant challenges due to Jay-Z and Diddy's actions, often without receiving proper recognition. He reportedly describes their lives as tumultuous and arduous. Ice Cube has also pointed to Hollywood's history of exploitation, citing instances where even prisoners have been taken advantage of. It's not just Ice Cube. There's a perception that Hollywood collaborates closely with influential private industries, benefiting from the free labor of millions of inmates. This concern Concern extends to the vulnerability of young children, innocent teenagers, and especially female artists who may be susceptible to exploitative practices within the entertainment industry. He has consistently made alarming accusations, claiming that Hollywood functions like a mafia, profiting from subjecting individuals to various challenges. Strangely enough, there appears to be ample evidence supporting this unsettling notion. Whether it's CEOs of Hollywood studios or owners of record labels, those in positions of power in the industry allegedly have an interest in boosting the prison population. According to these claims, the underlying motive is as simple and sinister as one might expect. And they definitely know who they are. A lot of people would be like, what, who, who, who? Come on, man, stop playing. Ice Cube appeared on Bill Maher's Club Random podcast and made some bone-chilling revelations. He says, Hollywood executives want people to be locked up and they help create a whole culture of violence and thug life to make this possible. This isn't just mindless speculation. Anyone can easily see the truth when you look at where the money goes. He spoke very clearly about the connection between Hollywood and the influential industry. Who benefits and profits off our bickering and division? I don't know their names, but if you follow the money, you go high enough you start to see literally the same people who own the record labels own the prisons. The music industry also benefits from landing naive young people into prisons, and the higher-ups use music to push these people into the lifestyle of crime. Ice Cube spoke about this and said, it seems really kind of suspicious, if you want to say that word, that the records that come out are really geared to push people towards that prison industry. According to the rapper, the whole industry is involved in creating an environment that makes young people more prone to crime and violence. A very sinister and elaborate social engineering is at work here in order to make profit off of people's lives. Ice Cube and Bill Maher's podcast discussion shed light on the alleged role of record label owners in glamorizing violence and gang culture in music. They suggest that these owners intentionally depict such lifestyles as desirable and cool, influencing impressionable young people to romanticize a path of violence and crime. Consequently, more youth may be drawn into the criminal justice system, depriving them of the chance to pursue genuine opportunities for a better life. Allegations have emerged indicating that individuals linked to the case have a notable interest in the occult and may have been previously involved in human sacrifices. Recent revelations have brought attention to several suspicious aspects of the case, suggesting the possibility of foul play. What distinguishes this moment is the blunt and explicit nature of these accusations. An increasing number of supporters are advocating for the reopening of the investigation, displaying unwavering commitment to securing justice for Aliyah. It ain't no name I won't name. It's up. You know what I'm saying? And just for Minister Farrakhan, I love you, but the way you read that, I took that as a slight... You know what I'm saying? Bold statements, such as those made by Kanye West, assert that not only his mother, but numerous others have allegedly fallen victim to a mysterious and cruel organization involved in disturbing human sacrifices. Despite the gravity of these accusations, many seem hesitant to directly confront or challenge this elusive force. Kanye, known for his outspoken nature, 
fearlessly continues to voice his opinions. Whether they involve controversial ideas or what he perceives as hidden truths, his steadfast determination to express his views has once again thrust these contentious claims into the spotlight, sparking intense debates and concerns. These recent statements have left many puzzled, yet for those willing to delve deeper, a perplexing narrative begins to emerge. Celebrities, though not explicitly stating it, have dropped hints that numerous figures in the entertainment industry might be caught in a sinister web involving human sacrifices. Kanye West, in particular, asserts that he remains uncontrolled by Hollywood power players because he is not engaged in such activities. However, his cryptic references to a list of individuals potentially under someone's influence provoke thought-provoking questions. Kanye appears to allude to the secretive Illuminati organization, suggesting that some of its members may be linked to nefarious deeds. They can't control me. They can control Shaq and Charles Barkley. They can control LeBron James. They can control Beyonce and Jay-Z. Ain't no name, I won't say. It's up. Jaguar Wright's perspective on Aaliyah's tragic passing adds a compelling dimension to the ongoing discussion. According to her, at the time of Aaliyah's untimely death, Beyonce's solo career faced challenges, and she needed a breakthrough moment to propel her to superstardom, which Jay-Z allegedly facilitated. Aaliyah's unfortunate demise seemingly provided that crucial boost, ultimately establishing Beyonce as the queen of many hearts. As Aaliyah's memory fades, questions arise about how long the same individuals will benefit from recurring tragedies. Some argue that accountability for any potential wrongdoing is long overdue. Even fans are applauding Jaguar for her outspoken stance in defense of their beloved songstress, suggesting that it's time for justice to prevail in Alia's name. The complexity of Alia's case is further compounded by the involvement of R. Kelly. Circulating claims suggest that, in R. Kelly's trial, some of his alleged victims were coerced into providing false testimony, raising concerns about the fairness of the court proceedings against him. An audio leak has surfaced, purportedly featuring an individual identified as a federal informant who claims to have influenced one of R. Kelly's witnesses. The singer was seeking the appeals court to either overturn his conviction or grant him a new trial. It's worth noting that, in a separate trial in Chicago, Kelly had previously been sentenced to 20 years in prison in February after being found guilty of CP and enticing a minor, as reported by TMZ. During the Chicago trial, Kelly's attorney expressed similar concerns, stating that the government's burden cannot be met with the inference of bad character or tendency to commit crimes. You may consider him to be the most immoral, dishonest person on the planet, and that has nothing to do with whether the government has met its burden. At that time, a judge ordered Kelly to serve 19 of the 20 years concurrently with his other sentence. Yet another legal representative for R. Kelly petitioned the judge overseeing his ST case to vacate his conviction and initiate a new trial. The basis for this request is the argument that his trial attorneys displayed incompetence and that the singer was unjustly depicted as a sole deviant to the jury. Because defendant was forced to defend against dozens of uncharged claims of A and S misbehavior, much of it lawful, albeit unpalatable for some. Defendant was stripped of the presumption of innocence and denied a fair trial. Attorney Jennifer Bonjan wrote in a legal memorandum filed to court. However, there are some speculations that Jay might have been involved with R. Kelly in the minor case. According to reports, Jay-Z was the one who got the whole documentary Surviving R. Kelly up and running. Jay-Z may have provided the funds for Dream Hampton to make the documentary about Kelly's accusations. Looks like Jay-Z really wanted Kelly's career to be over. If you don't believe Ronnie's word on Jay-Z's role in the case, maybe this will do the trick. This case wasn't the first time that Jay-Z had helped Dream financially. In fact, the rapper wired tens of thousands of dollars in minutes after she asked him to help with expenses protesters incurred while demonstrating against police brutality. If Jay-Z was ready to give tens of thousands of dollars to her, it's not shocking that he also decided to fund the documentary she was making. Jay is so open-hearted with Hampton because the two happen to have a long history. You know, Dream Hampton was his ex-girlfriend. Dream Hampton wrote his book, The Decoded Book. You know, he, mm. he, he funded her protests in Ferguson. The narrative suggests that Jay-Z seized an opportunity by financing Dream's documentary, which not only gave her career a significant boost, but also contributed to the downfall of R. Kelly. However, the text implies that Jay-Z had a substantial list of motivations. 
Chief among them was a lawsuit that not only left Jay-Z's reputation tarnished, but also resulted in a financial setback of $70 million. It, it was a little deeper than the best of both worlds situation. You know, R. Kelly sued him for like $70 million after that. The narrative suggests that R. Kelly had disrupted Jay-Z's tour, won a lawsuit against him, and cost him millions of dollars. However, Jay-Z was also aware that if Kelly emerged unscathed from the trial, he might eventually speak out. After all, Jay-Z had his own secrets to protect. Damon Dash, singer Aaliyah's boyfriend at the time of her death, revealed that Jay-Z had also pursued Aaliyah, even when she was a minor. Damon stated, I did not know Jay was trying to holler at her, but then it just happened like that. He was trying, I was trying, everybody was trying, he was going hard. Damon further indicated that Aaliyah may have ended things with Jay-Z or kept him in the friend zone. This could have contributed to Jay-Z's animosity towards R. Kelly, especially after Kelly married Aaliyah, whom Jay-Z also had feelings for. According to Damon, Jay-Z became noticeably resentful when he discovered Damon's pursuit of Aaliyah. Damon clarified that although rumors suggested otherwise, he and Aaliyah were both actively courting each other. Their efforts culminated in them spending time together in the same house on the 4th of July. So we were both going hard, and we, right. and we ended up in the same house for 4th of July. So we were, for some reason, this, this day... Wait I a minute, you, Jay, and Aaliyah ended up in the same house? Yeah. It was a situation where Aaliyah's attention might sway toward him one moment and then toward me the next. Damon emphasized his consistency in his pursuit of the singer, saying, But that particular week, I was on top of my game. Everything I said was witty. You know what I mean? He recollected a specific incident, saying, I remember coming downstairs, and Jay-Z had this sigh. His friends were teasing him and making jokes. However, it seems like Jay-Z won the game, and he has reportedly also dated Aaliyah. Aaliyah wasn't the only girl Jay-Z had been allegedly involved with. There are rumors that he had a relationship with Foxy Brown, too, when she was a minor. Wendy Williams discussed this information, saying, Jay-Z and Foxy Brown were allegedly a romantical thing. All right, I'll say alleged, but we know, we know. Yeah, she hit it before Beyonce. Allegedly. Mm-hmm. Jay-Z has likely seen how the world will stand up to destroy you over such sorts of accusations, thanks to the Kelly trial, and he certainly doesn't want that for himself. That's why he allegedly funded the documentary and did so at such a strategic time that the jurors could watch it and form their opinions on the matter beforehand. According to Ice Cube, Jay-Z is not working alone in carrying out such alleged crimes. He allegedly has the support of moguls like Diddy, who himself has been linked to numerous alleged criminal activities. Diddy's involvement, particularly through his head of security, highlights his role in the situation, intensifying public concerns. There is now an increased sense of worry surrounding Cassie, with people mindful of the unfortunate events involving Kim Porter during her marriage to Diddy. Speculation is circulating that Cassie may be in jeopardy after speaking out against the influential mogul in the industry. Concerned individuals are drawing parallels between the current situation and past events involving Kim, raising fears that history could repeat itself for Cassie. The entertainment industry was deeply shaken by the sudden death of Kim Porter, leaving loved ones and supporters grappling with disbelief over how a seemingly healthy young woman could succumb to pneumonia. Adding to the tragedy, a significant number of people questioned the accuracy of Kim's diagnosis. Initially, Kim's death was surrounded by uncertainty, with the first coroner's report revealing the presence of toxins in her body and an undetermined cause of death. The mysterious disappearance of the initial coroner only added to the intrigue. Subsequently, another coroner attributed the cause of death to lobar pneumonia. Notably, Jaguar Wright, often regarded as a forthright commentator in the entertainment industry, succinctly captured the sentiment surrounding Kim's death. Kim died from pneumonia, but there's the first coroner's report that said that she died. It, it was ruled a homicide and they found toxins in her body. She subtly hinted at the possibility of certain poisons inducing symptoms similar to pneumonia, implying a connection to Diddy in some capacity in the case. The most unsettling aspect of the case emerged when the initial coroner, who had made his findings public regarding Kim Porter's death, was discovered dead. Tuffy News TV first reported this distressing development. Now, from the information that I've received, I've been told that he was the head of the snake into the investigation of the passing of Kim Porter. And not only that, y'all, he was the one who initially found something problematic. Tuffy didn't stop at revealing the coroner's demise. 
his industry informants provided additional information. According to Tuffy, he received an email from one of his followers detailing that Kim Porter purportedly attempted to reach her personal doctor, but faced difficulties in doing so. This alleged struggle led her to make a critical mistake, described as the most significant of her life. According to sources, after Kim Porter futilely waited for her doctor to respond, she confided in the father of her daughters, who then directed her to another doctor of his choosing. Unfortunately, despite these efforts, they were unable to save her. Surprisingly, it's suggested that Kim had a premonition of the unfolding events. Allegedly, she sent a group text to her close friend saying, he got me. However, the phone was reportedly confiscated by the security team brought by Diddy when he arrived at Kim's house after her demise. There's another dimension to the suspicion surrounding Diddy's involvement in Kim Porter's death. Diddy, known for being a serial cheater, reportedly engaged in infidelity with Kim's best friend at the time, Sarah Chapman. The timing of Sarah's pregnancy coincided with Kim's, causing profound emotional distress. This trauma visibly impacted Kim's health, and of course, Diddy just had to rub it in with the expensive gifts he got Sarah Chapman. Compounding his challenges, Diddy has encountered a recent setback in his personal life concerning his relationship with Young Miami. A close friend of Young Miami explained, With everything going on, Young Miami is choosing to step back for now. The future is uncertain, but for the time being, both of them have decided that it's best to take a break. Young Miami forms one half of the popular rap duo, The City Girls, alongside JT, Jatavia Shakara Johnson. Hailing from Miami, Florida, the duo rose to prominence after an uncredited guest appearance on Drake's hit single, In My Feelings, in 2018. The City Girls signed with Quality Control Music in 2017 and made their debut with the mixtape Period in 2018, followed by their first studio album, Girl Code, in the same year. Their music has yielded platinum-certified U.S. Top 40 singles, including Twerk, featuring Cardi B and Act Up. The duo has continued their success with albums like City on Lock, 2020, and Raw, 2023. Diddy, the acclaimed recording artist and music producer, has woven a tapestry of high-profile relationships throughout his illustrious career. The rumors further got strong when Young Miami gave her stance on the case. While the City Girls rapper remained hush-hush online through the first 24 hours of allegations and the quickly reached settlement, instead, it seems like Miami was busy planning a Lil Friendsgiving ahead of the holidays. Koresha shared visuals from her gathering, showcasing some of her guests. However, keen-eyed fans and critics quickly noticed the absence of her usual plus one in the footage. Though the full guest list remained unclear, the imagery revealed at least 12 chairs arranged at a long dining table. Saucy Santana and Ari Fletcher were spotted on the rapper's Instagram story. The venue provided a glimpse of a private room separated by tall drapes, adorned with a golden neon Friendsgiving sign. The table featured several bouquets of pink, red, and orange roses, along with scattered lit candles. Young Miami infused her Jamaican taste into the event, offering a catered menu that included Island classics such as oxtail, curry goat and shrimp, rice and peas, mac and cheese, and kebab. After the Shade Room shared clips of Karesh's event, social media users flooded the comment section with over 11,000 remarks. Some noted misspellings in Young Miami's printed menu, while others focused on notable absences, particularly pointing out the non-attendance of Diddy and JT. However, some also raised concerns about his behavior with women in the industry. Diddy's relationships with other females in the industry were also tumultuous. In the early 90s, he was involved in an on-and-off romantic relationship with fashion designer Misa Hilton Brim. This period coincided with her role in styling the music group Jodeci. Their union resulted in the birth of their son, Justin Combs. Following this, Diddy entered into a relationship with Kim Porter in 1994, and their journey had its share of highs and lows until their separation in 2007. Together, they share three children, including the rapper known as King Combs. Diddy's romantic timeline also includes a relationship with Jennifer Lopez, which began in 1999 and lasted for two years before their eventual breakup in 2001. In 2003, Jennifer Lopez voiced concerns about Diddy's fidelity during an interview with Vibe magazine. Oh God, I mean, we went through some very traumatic events. This incredible stuff was happening in my career. And at the same time, he was going through the trial. It was a lot of stuff to do. Diddy's romantic connections also extended to businesswoman Sarah Chapman, with whom he shares a daughter. Their relationship experienced periods of on and off dating. Additionally, Diddy was rumored to have had a fling with actress Cameron Diaz from 2008 to 2012. 
although she later married Benji Madden in 2015. His most recent lawsuit confirms the complexity of the situation. In a statement to The Times, Cassie revealed her readiness to break her silence after years in silence and darkness, expressing her determination to share her story and advocate for herself and other women who endure violence and abuse in their relationships. Contrastingly, a spokesperson for Combs, recognized by his multiple monikers such as Puff Daddy, P. Diddy, Diddy, and Love, vehemently refuted these accusations, denouncing them as offensive and outrageous. The representative further asserted that these allegations surfaced subsequent to Cassie's alleged demand of $30 million from the Mogul. And Cassie, whose real name is Cassandra Ventura, they're saying tonight that the two have settled a lawsuit she filed against the Mogul yesterday in Manhattan federal court. The lawsuit paints a disturbing picture of the relationship, revealing how Combs allegedly took control over every aspect of Cassie's life, both personally and professionally. The allegations detail years of horrific abuse, including brutal beatings, forced sexual encounters, and a constant looming threat of violence. The legal document portrays Combs as prone to uncontrollable rage, alleging that he compelled Ventura to participate in S acts with male S workers, capturing these encounters through photography and filming. The suit suggests that she was administered drugs before and during these incidents, enabling her to disassociate during these horrific encounters. Moreover, the lawsuit contends that Ventura was a victim of sex trafficking, as she was allegedly forced to engage in sex acts in multiple cities against her will. After Cassie leveled accusations of misconduct against Diddy, speculation began swirling among fans and industry insiders. There were whispers of other women potentially coming forward to testify if legal action was pursued. This situation drew parallels to well-known cases involving figures like R. Kelly, Bill Cosby, and Harvey Weinstein, where a cascade of testimonies played a crucial role in legal proceedings. The question arises, did Diddy's adept legal maneuver in resolving the issue with Cassie serve as a strategic move to sidestep a potential high-profile case, reminiscent of those involving R. Kelly, Harvey Weinstein, and others? Within the weighty lawsuit, it is alleged that Combs leveraged his influential connections to ensnare Cassie in a tumultuous and controlling relationship. However, people believe that Diddy's case is much more complicated because he was not only engaged with the women, but allegedly with the men also. Diddy likes to portray himself in the public as a dedicated father and family man, but his private activities show an entirely different picture of the music producer. However, the same goes with Jay-Z. But why are they actually doing such things? Only for fame and money? Only time will tell. If you enjoyed this video, click on the ones showing on your screen now to watch similar content.